Hello, my name is Vince Davis. I'm the Annual Cropping Systems Weed Science and Extension Specialist in the Department of Agronomy at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And I want to give a little update on where we're at with herbicide resistance in Wisconsin um, as of now. And it's uh, uh, December of 2014, and this is continually changing all the time, so we don't know how fast this will get outdated, but let's go through where we're at at the, at, at the moment. Some of the most concerning weeds for herbicide resistance in Wisconsin uh, is giant ragweed. It's a very competitive weed. It was confirmed resistant to glyphosate in 2012. It was also confirmed resistant to chlorantulam methyl or first rate in 2013. And it's a weed that's been becoming very problematic for a lot of growers, particularly on the western and south, south central side of the state. Horseweed or Caniza canadensis was also confirmed resistant to glyphosate in 2013. And then we also have a number of pigweed species, the amaranthus species, that uh, give us great concern about resistance. We have now confirmed water hemp to be resistant to glyphosate in 2014. And we also um, are in the process of confirming a population in Dane County of Palmer amaranth that is resistant to glyphosate. And uh, we've confirmed that through both molecular technique as well as whole plant assays now. And then uh, we have seven new fields uh, under investigation currently in the greenhouse that we'll talk about. A lot of this information uh, was, uh, uh, we were able to determine through a late season weed escape survey in, in corn and soybean fields conducted by Ross Recker and supported by the Wisconsin Corn Promotion Board, so we thank them for that. And what we did is we surveyed over 350 fields broken up into different regions across the state in 2012 and 2013 and that allowed us to determine where some of these weeds are most problematic. You can see here giant ragweed which I just talked about. We found in almost 22 percent of all fields in the western district of the state and 19 percent of all fields in the south central part of the state and this is a late season survey in September uh, uh, late August and September, so at harvest time of the year. So these are fields that have these weeds that uh, failed to be controlled through whatever control mechanisms they put in place. Water hemp is a more interesting uh, situation because we found it in um, almost every district of the state where it was in almost 10% of the fields in the eastern side almost 16 percent in the south central and uh, over eight percent of all of the western district so we didn't seem to have any up in the central district but the western south central and eastern is a very problematic weed now i'm going to show a series of maps of where these weeds are are located in the state we have these classified into multiple uh, classifications here where we have confirmed resistance and they're always colored in a solid color and what I mean by confirmed resistance is we have done a series of infield investigations as well as multiple runs in the greenhouse of what we call dose response experiments to determine that the population is statistically different from one population being resistant and one population being susceptible so Here's an example where giant ragweed, we have Rock County down here colored in. This is the county that we have confirmed resistance. We also have some counties here with these uh, dashed lines, which is suspected glyphosate resistance. And what I mean by suspected glyphosate resistance is that data from infield matches that we should be concerned with resistance. But also, we have done preliminary uh, screens or uh, preliminary dose response experiments in the greenhouse that indicates we expect it to be resistant we just have not done a second run or a confirmation run to color it in solid yet so we have a couple counties here with suspected resistance we also have one county with confirmed ALS resistance here Columbia County you see colored green and then we have a number of counties here that we mark grower concerns and these grower concerns category is where we have populations that we um, are likely going to investigate um, because the information from the field 
either from the grower or, or practitioners is that they can no longer control or have failed control of these populations with a certain herbicide. So multiple counties where we have concern about um, resistance. This uh, image here just shows water hemp uh, from the field that was collected in 2013 and how, how problematic it can actually be in a soybean field. And this just shows you an image of some of our dose response work in the greenhouse. The susceptible plants here uh, are on the left. You can see they're all dead. The resistant plants are on the right. And what this is is an image that was taken 22 days after a glyphosate application. And the glyphosate application was made on 3-inch plants at a rate that is two times the normal field use rate. So 44 fluid ounces of Roundup Power Max on this. And you can see the water hemp plants that continue to grow right through this from an Eau Claire County population. And this is just a graph from uh, the dose response we use here what you can see is glyphosate dose in a logarithmic scale on the x-axis and plant dry biomass on the y-axis. You can see out here to four times the normal use rate we had zero growth inhibition um, from that application in the resistant population. So this just demonstrates how we look at these populations to be significantly different where you can see at very, very low rates of glyphosate in a susceptible population, we had significant dry mass production um, immediately. So a very stark contrast difference between these populations between susceptible in the solid and resistant in the dash line up here. Now another, uh, uh, to show you the map of common water hemp um, and where we're at up here, are the Eau Claire and Pierce County populations, which are the, the, the counties I just showed you the images for where we have confirmed resistance. There are multiple counties where we suspect glyphosate resistance. We have multiple counties here where we also suspect glyphosate and PPO resistance, which is problematic, and many, many counties where we have grower concerns of uh, herbicide-resistant common water hemp. Horseweed, I talked about this. This is a, a weed that we confirmed glyphosate resistant in 2013. There's two different counties where we have confirmed resistance, and then there are, there's a, one additional county with grower concerns with this particular species. Here's just an image that again shows uh, a susceptible population on the left here, Jefferson County versus a, res uh, sorry, a resistant population on the left here in Jefferson County versus susceptible on the right and you can see uh, the 1x is 0 0.87 kilograms acid equivalent per hectare which e is equivalent of 22 fluid ounces of Roundup Power Max is our 1x and you can see how different in response is and again on a logarithmic scale um, displayed like I showed with the water hemp a little bit ago you can see we can calculate an R to S ratio of, of over six times more tolerant or more resistant in uh, the resistant populations from the susceptible populations. A little update on Palmer amaranth. I said we confirmed that uh, recently to be resistant to glyphosate in Dane County. Um, uh, so this uh, uh, county right here is going to be blue. Um, I have not done it in this presentation. We are going to officially announce that in January in a couple weeks. We're summarizing the data right now, but it will be confirmed glyphosate resistant. This county will be blue. In addition to that, we have uh, additional populations in Iowa County where we have some suspicion of glyphosate and HPPD resistance. So that will be more forthcoming as we go. My five second identification characteristic that is very important with Palmer amaranth is that petiole length. If you fold the leaflet of a Palmer amaranth over on top the petiole. The petiole is much longer than the length of the leaf blade in Palmer amaranth. That is very different from water hemp. Both Palmer amaranth and water hemp have no hairs on them, which differentiates them from the other pigweed species. And then petiole length will quickly differentiate Palmer amaranth from water hemp. So a very quick ID lesson on that. Another difference between Palmer amaranth and and water hemp is that palmer amaranth has very long inflorescences. 
So in ID video, I talked about the importance of inflorescence. Uh, Palmer amaranth has a very long inflorescence. And the joke is we say Palmer amaranth inflorescence, you measure in feet and water hemp you measure in inches. So it's a running joke here of, of measuring that. One of the most problematic things with Palmer amaranth is that it emerges throughout the summer all summer long. So here's a picture of Palmer amaranth uh, that was less than two weeks old but already flowering. It's an up close picture next to a quarter and this was on August 8th of 2014. And this is just an example of what some of those uh, bad uh, populations look like uh, the third week of August, you can see these plants are going to produce many, many seeds if left uncontrolled and, and out of check. We have investigated situations of con grower concerns of velvet leaf, but have no suspected resistance or confirmed cases of glyphosate resistant velvet leaf as, uh, as of now. We also have some suspicions of glyphosate resistance and suspicions of ALS resistant common ragweed, particularly over on the eastern side of the state where common ragweed is more problematic in the state. To learn a lot more information about management of herbicide resistance, uh, we are part of the Take Action or TakeActionOnWeeds.com. Please go to this website. You can get multiple pieces of information uh, related to the four pillars of managing herbicide resistance, weed out resistance in the field, spray attention in the bottom line. So please visit that website, which is a, a, a supported by the United Soybean Board to learn more information. If you go to the website, it'll look just like this at the front page. Uh, you have the four pillars across the top. You can click on this take action button to get to a lot more information. If you click on know your weeds, you can get to uh, posters that show the 11 most important herbicide resistant weeds. You can get to fact sheets if you click on weed identification. You can get to fact sheets and management guides for many of these glyphosate resistant weeds um, uh, or herbicide resistant weeds. So very useful tools here at this particular website. You can also uh, click on manage your fields and, and uh, understanding herbicides and you can download a herbicide site of action lookup tool for your smartphones or smart devices or tablets as well as download a physical uh, chart for the herbicide classification chart which I discussed in uh, the last uh, uh, training video on herbicide modes of action understanding herbicide modes of action so you can get to this herbicide classification chart free and available via PDF on uh, the website takeaction.com. There are also resources on my website at Wisconsin Weed Science, Wisconsin Crop Weed Science, uh, com or wcws.cals.wis.edu um, for managing herbicide resistance. So with that, I thank you for uh, getting this brief update for the importance of herbicide resistant weeds in Wisconsin.